welcome to the NCF Presents for the Crop Over Culture. I am your hostess, Paula Ann, and with me today, I have Sharon Kuru White. Welcome. Thank you to very much. Culture. It's really nice to catch up with you. We've even been talking off camera. I'm sure you know her, but we'll get to know her a little better in this interview. So the first question I have, what are some words that you would say best describe you? Creative, mm -hmm. witty, mm -hmm. and still no nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask more about no nonsense, but we better keep it clean. <laughs> So I'm going back to the beginning mm -hmm. of your career and I found out that you pursued an associate degree in performing arts. Oh, you've done your research. I've done my research. <laughs> Can you remember what would have inspired you to go down this road? Um, if I age myself, I'm going to tell you because you came up in the, my brother was a doctor uh -huh. and I always wanted to do creative Something creative. Yes. And my parents are like, I'm not going to finance that. <laughs> I ain't financing that at all. So um, after coming back and studying, I said I want to do something that I really was passionate about. Yes. So I went to community college yes. and I did the associate degree in performing arts. Uh -huh. For me, it was a case of doing something that I now loved. Yeah. That I didn't feel was studies. It just felt like. Ma, this is a part of you. This yeah. my this is my extended life. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's like about pursuing a passion and yes. not just going to school for going to school sake. Mm. I want to ask about the support from family at that time. When I talk to creatives now, mm -hmm. they say that their parents are like, why don't you do something real that will make money for sure? Was it like that when you were pursuing your um, your passions? Well, at first, not at first, because that was what I wanted to do full time. Yeah. But after I became qualified in my other chosen field. Yeah. My parents were the first people. If I have a show, all my mother's up front. Yeah. If it is something, I say, well, mommy, we run for short of $500. She said, come. I said, I'm the sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my mm. family, they will come in. If I'm performing overseas, yes. they find out where it is and they all come, like down, come down. Yes. Yeah. It's, that is grave. good. And the performing arts is way. So like, what did it encompass? What, what did you do specifically? Music, theater, all the above? I did, when I did the associate degree in performing arts, it was mm. all of the above. Wow. But I can't sing. And <laughs> Roger Giddens and Pernell Farley would tell you, <laughs> I had to do a blues. So I had to do fish gotta swim and birds gotta fly. Yeah. I've gotta love that man till I die. And let me tell you, he really got heart to love me if I can sing. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. Not a good part in this throat. <laughs> but ironically, yeah. um, my mentors are Yvonne Weeks, Dr. Oh, Yvonne Weeks, yes. Merle Niles, and they were like, um, you know, outside of the theater aspect, Sharon, you yes. have a business head. Yes. Um, and you think outside of the box. Actually, yes. there's no box when you think. Yes. And so they said to me, well, uh, why don't you try the creative arts in terms of the crop over season? And I was yeah. like, crop over? I mean, I had, I was a bad fan. Yeah. I was from St. Phillips. <laughs> Hello. And it comes from the territory. <laughs> I knew what it was to have a red bag and wave back Correct. then when I was it younger. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> In the stadium and you're waving, you're waving. Yeah. So I knew that aspect of it being yes. brought up in the tent. Yeah. But I was thinking like a tent. I had not really um, attended tent shows. Yeah. I had attended the stadium shows. Yeah. So for me, that, that meant, well, look, what would I do? Yeah. And I gave it a try with lines then, first of all. Yes, yes, yes. And this is literally my <laughs> next question. How did you get your start with lines then? Collect so tight. Somebody gave you a call. You went outside the door and looked in. Like, how did you get into it? It was actually, I was actually doing a Kamal graphic piece at BCC. Yeah. And I am always defiant. <laughs> I no thought, nonsense. No nonsense. Yes. <laughs> I thought I could get to... Um, lines then rehearsal I still get back and do my piece on stage yeah and I kind of was you know you're supposed to be in place for about an hour before yeah man I consider that hour I figure <laughs> if I get back it would be enough time to get on stage so um, I had gone on to meet with the people for Lions Den at that time it was Rasai Lee yes um, oh gosh lord if I tragic. legends legends, legends. The legends in, the, in the field then mm -hmm. um, I remember the first time I saw 
little Rick come to rehearse, and I'm like, oh, Lord. You know, these people, <laughs> you, you only see or hear about these people. Um, the late Lemmy O'Wave was one of the backup oh, singers. Yeah. Um, it, it was truly a, a really exciting moment for me. Yeah. And I was like, well, I like this. I, I really like this. Yeah. And I still went back and got on stage with enough time to dance with Geraldine Lynch. Yeah. Who was then a dancer? So me and my two left feet, I, <laughs> I had movement. She had dance. <laughs> but um, outside of that, Yvonne had said to me at the time, you know, Sharon, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to get into the Calypso Arena full time. And I yeah. was like, all right. And Merle Nels nurtured me then. Yes. Yeah. So would you have been involved in any green room theater then? Because you mentioned Merle Nels twice now. <laughs> um, so I, I feel like you would have been behind about that, that area as well. No, I no. had actually only taken it. I had left St. Michael's School. I went to sixth form in England. Oh. So I missed that um, gelling and bonding of the green room. Okay. But my theater okay. came from going to Cats and, and different movies in yeah. West theaters in England. Yeah. And so I came back with a passion, something that was just really up inside yeah, of yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was it. And I guess once you have it, mm-hmm. people say, seem to see, well, all right, there's potential. Yes. And you got to give somebody a chance. Correct, correct, correct. And it will gnaw at you until it goes away. Oh, yes. <laughs> So you had an all-female tent, <laughs> Calypso Dome. Yes. It was a fantastic idea. Would you ever bring that back to the tent space in Barbados? Um, I may try it for a day, but I don't know if I'll bring it back. Yeah. Because from then, I went on to the House of Soka. Yeah. And that is where my passion is. Okay. Working with the now generation, the yes. new generation. Yes, yes. Um, Passing on the baton, yeah. watching young people grow. Yes. That for me is now my my passion. Yeah. So maybe we'll do a, a all night ladies' night, you know, we women up, put the women up front. I like One that. Night, yes. I like that. But um But I that think, was a yeah. brilliant idea. What inspired you to do that? A team. A team mm-hmm. of Jan Lane, Geraldine Lynch, mm-hmm. Merle Niles, myself. Yeah. A team of women. Yeah. Like, you are literally <laughs> calling the names of icons I would hear about growing up and wanting to be in the arts just, like, casually. But, you know, just, like, just give these people a call. And this is really, really good to know that you guys have that bond. Yes. What has been your greatest challenge now as a tent manager to date? In all honesty, it is yeah. almost, like, ironic now. You talk yeah. about all female. Yeah. You know, all males is usually a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. In that, I find Barbadians are acceptable after you have shown your success. So when you're step up and you've got, you're on the first ladder, yeah. nobody is there to hold that ladder for you. So you can literally fall down. Yeah. But um, once you've reached the top of the ladder, people are there at the bottom saying, oh, help me up, help me up. Mm-hmm. So I found that my challenge was sometimes proving who you are mm-hmm. and what you have and what your ideas are. Yeah. I remember in one... Let's call it a tech meeting. Mm-hmm. It was my first introduction to the House of Soka. And I was like, oh, these legends, Serenade, mm-hmm. um, Termite, Invader, all these legends are there. And I have come in my 20s <laughs> to say that I'm going to become the tech manager. <laughs> but who is you? Who you come from? <laughs> who is you? Uh, who you come from? <laughs> and... Um, I remember thinking you had to register again with tents. Yeah. And I'm saying, well, you know, I have this body in the tent, that body. And when um, they show me my registration list, nobody didn't register with me. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my so, God. So, um, but you have to put on as, you know, your, as your big girl boots. Yes. And then you say to them, listen, this is what I've come to offer. Yeah. This is what I'm paying Mm-hmm. This is what I think is a good idea, and yeah. we will do it together. Yeah, and you get some people then saying, "I didn't give her a chance." Yeah, and um, I think that year the Hawk made it to the finals, mm-hmm. and so did somebody else as well. Yeah. But it was like, all right, she ain't got a bad idea. She ain't got a bad concept. Yeah, she knows what she's talking. She knows what she's talking. And I yes. won the juniors that year. Oh yeah, with Princess K. Yes. Wow. So her first year won the juniors. Yeah. So. You know, people are like, oh, I, can, I see what she's coming with. Yes. The next year then, won again. Yes. And um, because then you kept winning competitions, mm-hmm. 
you're not recognized. Mm. Your ladder now got three or four people holding it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you've got the assistance and, and you've got the help. Yeah. And honestly, I had some sponsors that I knew outside of the cultural arena and the music arena mm. that I knew from my full-time job. Yeah. Who had believed in my approach to boards marketing and yeah, business yeah and they're st- stuck by me i mean um mark sabga was a gentleman mm-hmm. that i can't ever say no to yeah he had um barbados industries and he used to say to me shara you know a lot of artists don't say thank you you know lots of artists don't really say thank you and i said to him no 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 i i thank you for the time yeah from the first check that you gave me yes. i'm saying thank you you can't take the money out right <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> And then you can't take the money and say, come for this thing here for the sponsors. You have yeah. to say what it is and give them their brand awareness. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Are you talking about things like brand awareness? So I, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag that you're also a marketer. I won't say <laughs> we're necessarily. <laughs> but do you think that that makes the difference in the way that you manage a tent? I would say it helps. Yeah. It helps a lot. It does. Because I... Lord, that tells everybody. I <laughs> did. I did accounts first. Yeah. So you you obviously have to look at your budget, mm. and then you have to look at how you what demographics you're reaching. Yeah. Your target audience, and you look at your competitive market. There, yeah. are, right now, there are six, five other tents. Yeah. There's six of us. Mm-hmm. We all have a pool of maybe let's say maybe six thousand pages that can go to tents. Yeah. But you gonna make it appealing? Of course. What is gonna make you Paula Camp House is okay. I can tell you. And if one to get you there, what's gonna make you stay till the end of the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need so, these big names. They not need talent. Talent. But you may not have a big name. Oh I rem- gosh. <laughs> I remember when Invader said to me, Sharon, who's this lady, Lady Essence? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I had people that came to ask me if she was performing. And Lady Essence only used to do one thing and split. <laughs> And the band would be like, uh, <laughs> and the audience would be in an uproar. And then they would say, she's coming back in the second half. <laughs> and that yeah. was a hit when we were at Queen's College School. Yeah, yes. And I remember some people saying, well, that was, was the back, because it wasn't on his back for that. Yeah. It was um, Raga Soka. Uh-huh. So what are they doing in the tent? Yes. But then I get people telling me, she back next year. She got yeah. that other song. Yeah. I know it is the right choice. Yes. Yeah. And it seems to me like you are a risk taker. Oh, because yeah. they, we want to be taking the loving and breathing. It's not for this lady's <laughs> hard work, right? Managing Mole and, and some other big names that we love. If you've been singing about Marby for this season, <laughs> then you yeah. know, you understand Bruce the Almighty is another client of hers as well. So what makes you take those risks? That I see other um, veterans, because she ain't old, not <laughs> no. taking. Like, like, how are you so brave to do that? We have to, we have to look at continuity. That's one thing mm-hmm. about art form. Yeah. And you can't sing Calypso the way it is and say that it's going to work. Mm-hmm. You can't fill an audience. Because even now with this COVID pandemic, mm-hmm. I've got to look at who is going to come out. Yes. I know my mother, as I tell you, she's one of my biggest supporters, but she says, Sharon... <laughs> I don't know how many nights are coming. It's only three nights, which is, I don't know how many nights are coming. But I've got to look at the young people that are going to come out. Mm-hmm. But what is going to appeal to them? Mm-hmm. So you've got to take that risk. You've got to bring in something that is going to appeal to them. And then you are also teaching them and giving them a chance to appear and work with icons. Mm-hmm. I mean, more was in the tech man we had now the observer. Mm-hmm. So you would have observer telling him, that song ain't sound too bad, but, you know, put on a, put on a jacket the next time and yes. lift up the song, lift up the song. Yes. You know, yes. lift up the breathing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, there's different elements and they learn from each other. Mm-hmm. Just to let the cat out the bag a little bit, we had an audition this year. Well, we call it auditions. It's basically yeah. when you bring your songs to us. Okay. And Popsicle had a song and it's, it's very witty, mm-hmm. very, very witty. Yeah. And Mo said... Man, I could see how I could cha- help you change up that. I really got people on the <laughs> edge of the seats. And to see that he is stimulated by this is social commentary. Yeah. And we would not think more as like social, social commentary, commentary at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, something spicy I, coming. Something spicy coming. All right. Stay something tuned. spicy coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, if I decided. I want to be in House of Soka tent. What is that process like? 
on a regular year, because this mm-hmm. is not a regular year, yeah. we usually audition in January. Oh. January the 21st. Mm-hmm. And why I say audition, it is also about gelling as a team. Yeah. And yeah. getting to know, getting to know how you feel. Yeah. Getting to know what you think, because we have Faith, you have Ramesses, you have Peter Ram. Yeah. You have Rick. Oh, um, you have all of those folks with the Saruels, the um, Doyens, yes. the Renans, the Quans, yes, yes, the yes. Juniors. So you've got all of them, but they've got to mesh together. Correct. If not, Correct. you are going to get... Uh, an imbalance. Yeah. You want to have a backstage where people can mingle Mm -hmm. and feel. You can't come on stage with negative energy. Mm -hmm. So you can't have it in your dressing room. Yeah. So it has to mean that you gel from day one. Correct. So you may have the best song. Yeah. But we may not, you may not gel. Yeah. Because attitude may not be right. Uh-huh. So it's almost so, like a job interview. It is. It yeah, is. Yeah, so we yeah. call it auditions, but it yeah. isn't really auditions. It's making sure that you gel with the team. Okay. So once you can gel with the team, because yeah. we have our core, mm-hmm. and then we have our, you know, these, these spicy ones on the outside, <laughs> and then we have the fluffs that are all the others that come on. So once I you can gel, be a spicy one on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> and, then you have to look at what's your unique uh, proposition because okay. we know who in there are the social commentators. Yeah. You know who are the bashment artists. Correct. You know who's comedy, yeah. the economy elements. You know who your juniors are. Yeah. And you've got to remember, like, we've had the two years hiatus. Yes. So my juniors, which were Dynamo, um, Renan, Kwan, are now seniors. Whoa. So we have to nurture juniors. Yeah. So we only have KCB there now and um, Dondre, but Dondre is between... 18 to 19. So this is her last year as well. Oh. So you've got to look at that. You've got to look at, as I said before, continuity. Yeah. Because somebody got to pass it back on. Correct. Forward, backwards. It yeah, really is a yeah, relay. Yeah. So um, for that, that is weird. So yes, auditions are January. Yeah. Then you have to make sure that when I speak to my band leaders, I have two. Yeah. Because both of those get me in place. Roger, uh, Roger Jordan and Andre Black. I keep yeah. on my toes. <laughs> they have to say, Sharon, if you're having X amount of shows, we have an X amount of rehearsals. Okay. Music has to be in. The band yeah. has to have it first. Then, mm. yeah. So it's a process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, this is really spicy. <laughs> and even spicier, I have my trivia box. And before we go to a quick break, you're going to pull this question. One question just here for you. I feel like you know the answer to this one. You can read that. And if you know too, but you'll find out in a second. <laughs> so I you can to. show the answer. <laughs> Name the last person to win the Calypso Monarch competition in 2019. And? <laughs> oh, I have to give you the yes. answer. <laughs> My boyfriend, <laughs> William <laughs> Classic Wiz. <laughs> We'll be right back after this quick message from the NCF. <laughs> So we're back. You are watching the NCF Presents for the Cropova Culture. I'm your hostess, Paula Ann. Sharon Carew-White is here with me today, and we are getting to know her a little bit better. So I wanted to ask you, you have managed House of Soka with great success since 2003. What has been your proudest moment to date? Honestly, I would say 2000. 11, yeah. followed by 2014, and then 2015. <laughs> you said moment. I have said moments. Well, <laughs> I want to hear about these moments. I love a good story. 2011 was popsicle, uh-huh. and he was the only donkey in a thoroughbred race. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> because that's what people were saying. Yeah. We had very little sponsorship. Mm-hmm. As I said, I well, ironically, the same man I mentioned before yeah. was probably the only one of the few people that sponsored us yeah. at that stage. And we went in with, my cousin came down with some balloons so we could pick a fair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was the name of the song. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> and that was F-A-I-R. <laughs> I was like, family TV. <laughs> like, we back, we back. We I back. remember we the song, back. I remember yes. the song. Yes. And we had balloons. And I remember being in the dressing room and hearing somebody say, them really feel that that one body in there could beat me with balloons. 
So, <laughs> well, well, I remember going, to, I used to sign off on the results and I remember seeing them at the end and we were at the top, but I thought it was the bottom. So, you know, you see the paper, you see the names yes. and, I, and I'm thinking, she's on bread. We come last again. <laughs> I think he become last, and then reality hit me, yes. and I was like, "Okay, no, that's the top." And for me, and obviously because I'm signing off professionally on the results on behalf of all the tens. Yes, I can't go out there and scream out, you know, we've done well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. everybody's like, "She, she feels like we really, we really, we didn't place at all." Yeah, we put all our heart and soul in it, but we didn't win. But when we did, it was that moment on stage that. Yeah, you know, um, Cornwell came out, and all of us yeah. we we just let everything go. Good, congrats so, again. Yes. <laughs> In 2014, yes, Gorg won the party monarch. Oh man, I love the drinks, uh, yes. man. The drinks, man. The drinks, man. And we sat the morning, and he said to me, Sharon, I got suspenders because you always say come in costume, and I got a bicycle." <laughs> So, what can happen here? I said, well, we can go and make it work. <laughs> and he is extremely creative. We bounce oh, off yeah. ideas. And so, it's not a matter of having to tell him anything else. Yeah. So, for me, I was like, all right. And when I saw people saying, I got, got my rum, I got, got my rum. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you just saw Bushy Park get... In a frenzy. Yeah, yeah. And you knew that even if he didn't win, it was very impactful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the moment he won. Yeah. <laughs> Big up, Gargi. Gargi, Gargi. <laughs> and my last. Yeah. But it won't be my last. I love it all yeah. stories. I love a story. Peter Ram, okay. 2015, all of we. Mm -hmm. Peter came and he said, Sharon, I always in House of Soka. And he is a man that really is a tech person. Yeah. He understands that tech life is not the same as when you're doing stage. Mm -hmm. You got to gel, as I said before. You've got to help others. You got to give advice. Yes, it's it's not it's as much. Family. Yes, it's not as much money either as yeah. if you do a big performance. Yeah, but you understand that you're there for the team. Correct, correct. And he correct. said, "Come work with me. Let me see if I can win a, a some sort of title." Mm -hmm. People knew Peter Rambi didn't win any titles before 2015. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And we worked together and Peter and I taught and we taught and, he, you know, he has his other management team there, yeah. but we talked a lot and he listened and I said, Peter, you know, you have a tendency to point your mic and not sing, mm. but this is competition. Yeah. Sing your song. Yes. Yeah. Sing your song. And he did it. Yeah. And there he is in his splendor, his red. And at the moment that he won, he said, how so so can we did it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that must have felt amazing, <laughs> amazing. for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is the performing artist again coming out, being yes. able to give him that feedback. Mm -hmm. So do you work with the artists individually like that normally? Yes, but we have a team. I mean, there's Yolanda mm -hmm. who does theater as well and she's our MC. So yeah. what we do is we break you up into teams and I usually tell people if you end up on my team, I be it's be good and it's be bad. <laughs> Because I'm so busy trying to get sponsors in. I'm yeah. so try busy trying to market the product of House as of Soka a as a whole. Yeah. That you're going to call me at one o'clock in the morning for me to give you advice on your song. Yeah. And I may not have listened to it from line to line. So oh. I may pass it on to uh, maybe a Carl T to yeah. get your costuming right. Yeah. Or I may pass it on to Geraldine to help me with your choreography. Movement. So, yeah. yeah so... For me or Ian Seely, I miss mm -hmm. Ian. Uh, I, so we do do teamwork. Yeah. But I tell people if you end up, because sometimes there's 20 something Calypsonians, mm -hmm. we divide them up, you end up with three or four under your umbrella. Yes. I may not have the time. Yeah. I may not have the time to really put in. And then I don't like to do that if you can't do that. And let's say Mole has an overseas performance. Mm -hmm. I off. Yeah. He and I are off. Yeah. So that somebody else suffers. Yeah. So, but generally the team does not leave anybody back. Yeah. We have Mr. DJ, who's the winner of the, the six time winner now of the blind competition. Uh huh. So this, nice. up to this morning, he was saying, well, give me another line. I said, listen, when you go by Gabby tomorrow, <laughs> calmer then. How to do my head and take it. 
<laughs> Listen, this is a busy life you are living. What do you do to unwind and take a break? Anything? Yeah, go to other shows and criticize. <laughs> critique, critique. <laughs> Constructively, <laughs> no. But listen, yeah. you end up when you're in this forum. Then yeah. you go somewhere and you say, "Let me sit down and watch this show." Yeah, and you end up saying, "I wonder if that body will will come over by we and sing two songs." <laughs> I wonder if that body with the MC here no. Yeah. You know, you, you, yeah. you're, you're there critiquing, you're looking, you're looking, and you say yeah. to yourself, or I never thought about doing that. Mm -hmm. But that fall spot look good behind that person. Yeah. And you say to yourself, what is it? It was supposed to be my unwind night, and I. So still working. Still working. So to unwind really and truly, I do dinner. We do a lot of dinner evenings with. I have two girlfriends, Nicole and Jack. Yeah. We will go out, and that way we start having dinner. And we still end up talking about shows. <laughs> <laughs> that is the life of a creative. Yes. How would you describe your experience managing Bashment Soccer Artist Mall? Um, I he is easy to manage. Yeah. Because he has a lot of ideas. Ooh. Um, it is for me, I just have to control mm -hmm. and show him sometimes what is a diverse um, reaction towards how he would like to always put over stuff. Yeah. And, but he listens. Good. So good, good. you will get collaborations like what he has this year with Mikey. Mm -hmm. You will get um, Sweet Soka songs where he has. You will get I'm Blessed, which he did for his daughter, which I said, to him, you know, you got to do something for Zuri B, man. Yeah. So... You get he listens, Good. but his, his his passion is down there. Yes, and then sometimes because I he educates me to keep my ears to the street because he will say to me sometimes, especially like over COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't understand because he's like he calls me my mom. You don't understand. <laughs> this is what these street people want, and they go give them what they want because that's yeah. what financing me. Yeah, and. Sometimes I have to sometimes sit back and say yes. Mm -hmm. But I like the fact that he is it's not a hard sell. Mm -hmm. Um and he understands, I mean, the things that we want to do, we like to do tours. Mm -hmm. But again, it is getting the public out there to realize that he is a diverse artist. Yeah. And not only bashment. Correct, correct, correct. So don't pigeonhole him. Don't pigeonhole him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, don't pigeonhole him. Is, more <laughs> is, more is so if, it's, let's say you don't necessarily want to be in the but you want to be managed by Sharon Karu White, is that possible? I do. I am, yeah. um, but. It is. It takes time. Yeah. I have a few DJs that I work with. DJ Scorpion. Okay. Um, from Q and Community. Most yeah, of yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, of course but I, not Q. Yes. <laughs> but I, I, I sometimes work with Radar Sounds as well. I do yes. a lot of his um, ideas and um, creative um, Caribbean country. Yeah. But I tend not to mix them too many because mm. when you have too many persons under one umbrella. Yeah. As Paula says to me, I want a DJ and I want an artist. Okay. How do I select? How do you select? Yeah. yeah. So, especially if they're doing the same things. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I like yeah. to be fair to the artists. Um, mm -hmm. I always do the persons that I manage directly, obviously, are my part yeah. of the bread and butter, their bread and butter. Yeah. I take them first and then I choose from within House of Soka mm -hmm. because I do manage other artists within the tent as well. Yeah. And then I manage other artists outside the tent. So, <laughs> but I, it's a lot. Yes, it's yeah. a lot. It would probably be a case that I may have to bring my whole team together. Mm -hmm. And let us say, we because we do have a company, Shazia Exclusives. Mm. But it, I don't know how much time we have. And yeah. that, that's the thing. Yeah, You have the, you're willing. But you, I like to execute what I think is an excellent performance, mm -hmm. an excellent experience. Yes. So if I can't give it, I'll say no. Yeah. It may not be for me. Yeah. I hear a lot of people give the criticism that some people say, oh, I'm an artist manager, but really they're a booking manager. Thank and as you. you talk, I can clearly tell you're an artist manager. What would you say is the key difference though? All right. When you are managing artists, mm -hmm. the artist has to understand that they have to listen to you. Mm -hmm. It may just be from the outlook, your mm -hmm. look on stage. Yeah. Um, you got to know who your target market is. Again, your marketing background helps. Correct. So yeah. you you have to understand that. You have to understand where you where you're marketing. Is mm -hmm. it Barbados? Is it 
England? Is it Canada? Mm-hmm. Is it Japan? Where is it you're going to? Yeah. Therefore, when you produce your music, you're producing your music that it can have an international flair. Um, so you've got to decide what elements of it. But a booking agent can take you. I could just tell you, call my number, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but more now. Yeah. You know, that <laughs> take kind your of thing. Take, take, and breathe. And breathe. <laughs> but I don't believe that. Because yeah. therefore, after a while, you say, oh, I hear this artist will happen. They either burn out or they lost. Yes. Yeah. And there's no continuity. There's no um, growth in them. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's always growth for everybody. Correct. So... I like to see young artists like even in Quan, our mm-hmm. last junior mana. Yeah. He won, he came, didn't have that um, zest to, to win. He, then he had it. Now he's going into a senior competition. But if you see the growth of him, yeah. the development side of him. Yes. Um, I also like, we had, I have an artist named Hanif. Hanif doesn't sing anymore mm-hmm. um, because of an accident. But he has done his art videography and our uh, photography. So he still stays. So he stays with the tent. Yeah. And um, right now, I call on him. I will say to him, listen, I want to put together this graphics. And in two twos, he'll say, look, this is the debt you got for this body. This is the nice. debt you have for that. Nice. So, you know, um, he'll say, listen, look, I went and I looked and this body doesn't have enough Instagram following. Yeah. Let them, let them see. Let me see how we could increase that. Nice, 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 nice. So, it's about you development. Do amazing work. I am a Thank fan. You. I am a fan. I am a fan. <laughs> how were you able to keep now this slew of artists inspired in the two years without crop over? We still try to do stuff. Yeah. Um, last year, for instance, the first year, obviously, you did all the, um, let me see if I can give you a donation. But I like to empower people. Mm-hmm. So I want to give you a food hamper. I don't want to keep giving me your money. Yeah. So I decided last year, we sat up with Infinity. Mm-hmm. And Renee and her team there were all for it. Because Ren- Renee's dad, I don't know if yeah. people know, Renee's dad is a former um, Calypsonian as well. Okay, okay. And Renee said, Renee and Kelly said to me, and they've always been sponsors. Yes. Tell me what you're going to bring. So nice. we said four shows, four nights, four people. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we did. And we yes. decided that you didn't have new Calypso, but you could do all genres. So it showed a different side to people. Yes, yes. So you got Dre singing, uh, Keith Sweat. Aye. And people calling for more. And <laughs> Doyen singing an Adele song. And yeah, people saying, where did yeah. she get them pipes from? Yes, 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 yes. Because <laughs> there's a misconception that you don't need to be able to sing to sing Calypso. So I Correct. don't know where people get, get that. that from. <laughs> but that's not the truth. Uh, and thank you to Infinity for supporting yes. the arts when we needed it. That's so true. Yeah, that is good. And you have people that wanted to come out. Yeah. Enjoy it. You had tourists there at the hotel too because they didn't have full occupancy at the time. Yeah. And I remember seeing her and a gentleman came down, I think we were four nights and he came three nights. Mm. And he, you could actually see the first night he sat in his patio <laughs> and he veranda and he looked down, you know, like I'm, I'm really <laughs> at the opera there. here. <laughs> and then the next week he was down. Yeah. He was part of it and, and stuff. It was, Good. he missed the fact that he couldn't walk up and walk up on yeah, people, but yeah, he, yeah. he got the concept yes. of our culture. And he could possibly come back for Crop Over 2022. Well, well, I hope I see him this year. <laughs> <laughs> So we've been hitting all interview long, mm-hmm. but what plans for the tent can you share with us for Crop Over 2022? Well, we have three nights, mm-hmm. well, three regular, what you know as tent nights, yeah. what people would think as tent nights. Yeah. We open on July the 2nd, uh-huh. July the 9th, and our yes. judging is July the 13th. Okay. And those are all at our home base, which is Derek Smith School okay. in Jackman, St. Michael's. Okay. You know, but from the time they opened, they were they had opened their doors to us. I made a little bond there. Yeah. We, that's our home base. Yes. And we are going to be at Infinity again. Mm-hmm. Again, they wanted us back, and we won't go back. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So we're going to be there with a the pool party. Mm. So something different. A little, yeah. um, so, you know, you're going to see the, um, it's, how does Diane's song go? Red Girl Anthem. I think that's how it goes. <laughs> Let me not sing it. <laughs> you have to come and see her singing yes. it, the Red Girl Anthem. You will see um, other members of the tech and at the pool party. The pool yes. party will say, we have B- BLP, which is Jimmy Dan, Bitch and Slap Party in. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the BLP there. So, yes. um, But we have other elements that are going to be exciting at the pool party at Infinity. Good. Good. And then... I'm not going to let this so much out, but during the midweek, you'll see us as what we would call a trailer or a teaser Ooh. to what you're going to see in the tent yes. every Wednesday. So, so can we find you online? And- of 
course. Okay, okay. It Tell us where to look. It's our <laughs> Have you not been following our pages oh, on Instagram right or after Facebook? This. But please follow us. Please follow us. At House of Soka. Oh, yes, the House of Soka. It's our hashtag. Please, please, please. You know, follow us, follow us. You know, we will make sure to have something. those handles yes. on this on this video. <laughs> and now, what plans can you share that you have now for the artists who might want to travel like regionally and internationally? The airports are cracked wide open now. Some of the restrictions are gone. Any plans that you can share with us? We are off from. I think it is from August. The end wow. of August. Yeah, August, September, October. We're out. We're wow. out for. Every other weekend, I think we're out of yeah, we're out. Yeah, um, we're looking to do Miami Carnival again this year, mm-hmm. and I would like to because I do also work with Nanette, um, and her costumes are doing beautifully in England. Nice. So we want to go up and, and see if we get a bit of Notting Hill Carnival. Yeah, boy, yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'm excited. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing crop over 2022 for you mm-hmm. and beyond that into the yes. carnival seasons that go into next year. What advice would you give to someone watching who says, I want to be like her? Hard work. Mm-hmm. It is It is hard work. Um, but make sure you have family support. Yeah. We, you know, um, I have a rugged family. My mother's a praying woman. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, so yeah. it doesn't, it's not a difference between being secular and sacred. Mm-hmm. You mix it, you blend it too. You have a yes. nice blend. And put God first, hard work, and have a team of family and friends that support you. Yeah. And I, I find that the reason I can mention names to you, because these people are not just business partners. Yeah. These are, they they came as friends and they're like family now. Yeah. I can't get them out my house. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the food, but you real yeah. good. Yeah. People don't come by here before dry, so. <laughs> but uh, they, are, they are all in the same wavelength. Good. So if I say to somebody on my team, listen, I want to do, for instance, um, even cricket in my full-time job, if I'm doing a cricket match, mm-hmm. and I say I want help and I want giveaways, mm-hmm. somebody in my team is going to take, um, it could probably be, I know you know Marsha, mm-hmm. Major Mother Sally. Yes. She may come and say to me, this, I can give away some gooseberries. Mm-hmm. I got to do So pick somebody over, jumps in on the team and says, let me yeah. assist. So it makes life easier Community. for you. Yes. Yes, well, that is yes. fantastic. A lesson for those watching. We talked about that off camera. Don't mm-hmm. burn your bridges. Yes. We need each other in this. It is true. So thank you so much for joining me here on the show. Thank you for having me. It was great talking to you. And we will see you at House of Soul Cate. Oh, yes. <laughs> Derek Smith, 7 p.m. <laughs> July the 2nd for sure. <laughs> Happy crop over, everybody. Thanks yes. for watching. <laughs>